Well, good Thursday to you folks. Hopefully you had a good night's rest. Whatever time of the day it is for you, if it's morning, if it's uh, noon, if it's evening, I pray that God will bless you today and you will be encouraged and you will be strengthened as we look into his word. I uh, want to take a moment and read to you a piece of scripture from the book of Mark. And uh, we've done uh, somewhere around 125 or 26 of these. Uh, and so maybe I've read this before, maybe I've mentioned this before, used this part of Scripture as a devotion. But in the book of Mark in chapter 8, we find that uh, Jesus has just asked uh, his disciples, whom do men say that I am? Now you find this in more than one place. You find it in Matthew chapter 16 and Luke chapter 9. But here when he asks, the writer Mark says, they answered John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And Jesus charges them not to tell any man. And just a, a verse or two later, um, Jesus begins to tell them what's going to happen to him, that he is going to uh, be crucified, uh, that he is going to be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and they're going to kill him. And after three days, he's going to rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine that? Peter began to rebuke him. He had just said to him, uh, you are the Christ. And so I'm not sure that Peter was doing it in a, in a mean way. Uh, I think Peter might have been doing it in a... Um, uh, this is not going to happen to you. You are the Christ. But however he was doing it, Jesus, this is where we find that Jesus says to him, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, was he was he actually looking at Peter and calling him Satan? Or was he speaking actually to the spirit of Satan saying, get behind me? Well, either way we look at it, we know that Jesus wasn't having it. He knew that he was going to to be crucified. He was going to die. And then he also knew that he was going to uh, raise from the dead. And so then we go on to read. It says, and when he had called in verse 34, the people unto him with him, his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, Jesus hadn't went to the cross yet. And they probably knew the Old Testament scripture that says cursed is every one that hangs on a cross. But they knew and they had to know with Roman rule and the Roman government rather being uh, in charge there, they had to understand that uh, that was a form of execution for the Romans to hang a man on a cross. So Jesus is speaking about death. Now what happens here shortly, Jesus carries his own cross um, to where they lay him on that and they crucify him and he dies there. And so what he's saying to these folks who would follow him, his disciples and all those around, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself to take up his cross and follow me. And what's he meaning? There's going to be some death here. Denying ourselves. Sometimes just denying the flesh feels like you're dying. <laughs> and uh, here he's saying, you're going to have to deny yourself. And then he also says, uh, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. So what is he saying? Whosoever will die out to this world and will give everything to me, uh, you will find life. And he came to give us life and not just life, but that more abundantly, the scripture says. For what shall it profit if a man, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What would it matter if you gained everything? And we know that's not possible and you're not going to, but what would it matter if you worked every day, worked your fingers to the bone, worked like a dog, as the old saying is, and gained everything that you could gain and saved it all up? What would it profit you if you could gain everything? And when you die and take your last breath, 
and you stand before God, you hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. Not depart from me. I knew you at one time. Not depart from me anything, but depart from me. I never knew you. It doesn't matter all the things that we could possess. It wouldn't matter if we could gain this whole world. What should a man uh, give in exchange for his soul? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? If we could right now, um, you know, the scripture says uh, that death and hell will give up the dead that are in them and they will be judged and then they will be cast into a lake of fire. The book of Revelation says, so if we could right now ask that rich man who lifted up his eyes uh, in torment, in hell, being in torment, if we could ask him, would you come back? If God would allow you to come back, would you give everything you had? I no doubt he would say, I'd give everything I had and I'd borrow to give more. I would do anything I could to get out of this place. What would it profit you if you gained this whole world and lost your own soul? It would profit you nothing. Um, that's for sure, nothing. I'm going to sing this song today, do my best to sing it. And, uh, Brother Danny Swords. Sing, send this song out to him. Uh, I saw him on Facebook, and I believe he lives in Virginia. Uh, but uh, I remember seeing him whenever I was young, and uh, him coming in to kneel at the cross. This is the the uh, the Martin guitar that I used to pack for my dad and play in there. And this was a song that Dad used to play and sing. And I I can't play or sing like him, but um, I'll try my best since it was a request for you. Lord, 
as we come to you today, God, I do pray that you would bless, Lord. Help us to realize that it is so important for us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow you, Lord. The saving part you do, the growing part, God, you instruct us. You gave us the Holy Spirit, Lord, to lead us, to guide us, to instruct us, God. Help us to ever walk in the pathway that you would have us to walk. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. See you Friday.